Making intelligent computers appears to be within our grasp. But if they are to realize their full potential, then they will need to become more than inanimate boxes. Computers that can control their movements and actions and interact fully with their surroundings and with others. This is the true aspiration of those exploring artificial life. At the present time, we have the intelligence in machines equivalent to that of a cat. Projecting forward, maybe another five, ten years, and we're up to chimpanzees and apes. I don't know. I, I, my guess would be, what, 50 years? Pick a number out of the air, and we have something, a uh, machine that is intelligent as a human being. One example of a creative computer which controls its physical processes is Aeron, an artist whose work has been displayed in galleries around the world. Aeron is a computer program that can produce striking works of art independently of its original programmer, Harold Cohen. It will make paintings of anything it knows about. It knows actually relatively little about relatively few things. Then it has another body of knowledge about how to build that knowledge into a representation. Based on its limited knowledge of the world, it designs images and then paints them using its own choice of brush and color. It displays a remarkable creativity, but is it what we can call intelligent? I'm not simply talking about having the program randomly change its parameters so it comes up with different images. I'm talking about intelligent self-modification. When one uses terms like that, one is thinking in terms of human beings. One is aware of what one is doing. Is the computer aware? I have the faintest idea. Um, I don't know how to ask the question. But I, I don't think any entity could do anything this complex unless it knew what it was doing. Scientists have turned to the natural world in their ambition to develop artificially intelligent robots. All we give the robot in the first instance is the ability to move its wheels around. A bit like a child has the ability to try and stand up, or it has, it has a couple of legs, but it doesn't know how to walk. In the same way that humans have to learn, it tries different things and, by reward, learns what is good and what is bad. But to match the complexities of organic creatures, let alone human beings, will take incredible creative ingenuity. We've taken a small step along that road. This Japanese robot can mimic the swinging abilities of apes. It can judge distances, allowing it to time its movements accurately. One of the most successful developers of human-like robots has been the Japanese company Honda. Engineers first set out to mimic walking. Early models focused on developing legs that could simulate the complex dynamic walk of a human. In later models, engineers added a head, body and arms to the robot to improve walking and balancing skills, allowing the robot to grasp or move objects. Standing just four feet tall and weighing 115 pounds, the latest robot, Asimo, can walk forward and backward, turn corners, and even walk up and down stairs. Like the Turing test for computers, the world of robotics has set its own standard for when a robot can be considered the equal. In the annual Robo Cup, robots of different abilities play each other at soccer. It may seem quite light-hearted, but by 2050, a team of robots could well play the best human side and win. I wonder if we will make robots so much like men and men so much like robots that they eventually will lose the distinction altogether and have a combined culture. <laughs>